and helped keep parasites at bay. But the jungle is full of creatures with a far less friendly bite. A leech tests the air, groping around to find a blood meal. It will latch onto any passing mammal. But it's no more than a nuisance to a lion-tailed macaque. There are far deadlier predators in the jungle. Giant reptiles can grow to be over five meters long. They are the true kings of the jungle. Venturing down to the forest floor is a risky business. eyesight is so sharp, it can spot prey moving a hundred meters away. But luckily for the lion tail, macaque is not on its menu. King cobras eat only other snakes. A hump-nosed pit viper could be in danger. but it's only 30 centimeters long, too small to be much of a meal. A three meter rat snake is more appealing. Locked onto its target, the cobra tracks its prey by smell, but not with its nostrils. It smells with its tongue. Chemical scent particles stick to its tongue and transfer to receptors on the roof of its mouth, known as the Jacobson's organ. The forks in its tongue work in stereo, enabling the cobra to pinpoint prey with deadly accuracy. King cobra inject more venom in a single bite than any other snake. Enough to kill an elephant. But snakes have a built-in resistance to the poison. It takes a lot more venom to kill a snake than a mammal. So a snake-eating king cobra delivers a massive dose. One bite is all it takes. In a matter of minutes, the cobra's venom shuts down the rat snake's nervous system. Proteins in the poison start digesting the prey before the cobra's even finished swallowing. Forests of the Western Ghats Mountains in India, the smallest animals can be deadly. A swarm of ants overwhelms a spider hundreds of times their size. A second spider intervenes. But this is no rescue mission. Spiders think nothing of making a meal of their own kind. The ants overpower it almost immediately. It's lucky to escape with its life.
Staying out of sight is the best way to stay alive. A Draco lizard is perfectly camouflaged to blend in with tree bark. Keeping still, he all but disappears. But today, this Draco wants to be noticed. He's looking for a mate. A bright flap of skin called a dewlap advertises his presence to females. But he's attracted the wrong kind of attention. A vine snake. Horizontal pupils give the vine snake acute binocular vision. It can judge distance with pinpoint accuracy. This is one of the thinnest snakes in the world. Its body is just two centimeters wide. But it's two meters long. Its mouth stretches right to the back of its head and opens so wide that it can swallow prey whole. The slender serpent moves slowly, mimicking a creeper swaying in the breeze. A perfect disguise in a world of plants. But the Draco senses danger and plays its trump card. Flexing its ribcage spreads out a membrane of skin to make a simple but effective wing. More than half of India's 238 species of amphibian live in the rainforests of the Western Ghats. Many are found nowhere else on Earth. With primitive lungs, amphibians supplement their air intake by absorbing oxygen through their skin. The purple or pig-nosed frog was only identified by scientists in 2003. It spends 50 weeks of the year buried underground. The purple frog is unique in India. Its closest relatives live 3,000 kilometers away in the Seychelles. Pignosed frogs are living fossils and proof of the Western Ghats' ancient origins. They're a throwback to a time when India and Africa were connected. 150 million years ago, the supercontinent Gondwana began to split apart and the triangular landmass that is now modern India broke away. This Indian plate drifted northwards over a volcanic hotspot. Boiling magma pushed up into the Earth's crust and heated the land. The edge of the Indian plateau morphed and faulted into a crumpled line of mountains. By the time India bumped into mainland Asia and began pushing up the Himalayas, the Western Ghats were long established and already home to a wealth of wildlife. At the height of the breeding season, male king cobras search for mates. But the snake this male's found is not what he's looking for. It's a rival male. This patch of forest isn't big enough for both of them. It's a 
Serpentine Standoff. They growl a warning at each other. A low frequency hiss. Air is sucked into their elongated lungs and squeezed out through the mouth as each snake constricts its body. Neither is willing to back down. The only option is to fight. This is a battle of strength, not weaponry. The huge snakes are immune to each other's venom. Each weighs up to nine kilograms and uses all its might and muscle to try and grapple the other to the ground. snake triumphs. The loser slinks off to find new territory. But there's high human stakes here as well. Couldn't have done it without you, Jackson Galaxy. I help cats, man. That's what I do. My Cat from Hell, tonight at 9 on Animal Planet. I felt like a machine drilling into my temples. Eyes rolled back in her head and she made a couple of noises. Christine's literally been eaten from the inside out. It was unnerving to think that another organism was living inside of my body. You have the warmth in your eyes. There are some phenomena science cannot explain. It was quite eerie, drifting with nobody on board. What's causing these mysterious events? Who's doing this? If this is a complete unknown. And are they in some way connected? Now, Discovery Channel will extract proof from the shadows and uncover the facts you weren't supposed to know. The Unexplained Files, a new series premieres Thursday, 21st of November on Discovery Channel. This November on Animal Planet. The lovable, the huggable, and the adorable. From ordinary pet to trick-tastic prodigy. Super fetch. The cuddly knows no bounds. World's cutest. A different angle. A change of pace. Meet the sloths. This November on Animal Planet. Over the summer months, monsoon clouds had been building over the Arabian Sea, sucking up moisture from the ocean. Now they sweep towards land, pulled in by the low pressure void of India's hot, dry interior. They slam straight into the Western Ghats. 
tallest peak is Anamudi, the elephant's head. It reaches 2,695 meters and is the highest point in India outside the Himalayas. Rain-filled clouds are forced up the steep slopes where they cool and condense. On the Western Ghats exposed peaks, Nilgiri Tarn brave the relentless mist and rain. Also known as cloud goats, they're well adapted to wet weather. Water runs off their coarse, short hair like a raincoat, keeping their skin warm and dry. The Western Ghats are known locally as Sayadris, the benevolent mountains. The peaks are a natural barrier to the monsoon weather system and intercept the rains. The sodden forests on the western slopes release water vapor back into the air, where it condenses and falls again as rain. This double deluge makes these tropical jungles some of the wettest places in India. Some areas receive 10 meters of rainfall every year. The rainforests teem with life, but the benevolent mountains sustain life hundreds of kilometers away too. Beneath the facade. Beyond the imagination. In the struggle for survival. Nature's most ingenious designs are on display like never before. Fooled by nature. Tonight at 11 on Animal Planet. Superfetch, a new series, premieres Wednesday, 20th of November on Animal Planet. Sick. Bigger tanks, new season. <laughs> 